I'm Holiday, and this is Looking Into Evil. Today, we're going to talk about the Taco Bell Strangler. I didn't give him that name. Taco Bell, don't come after me. This is the name that he was just given. What can I do? His name is Henry Lewis Wallace. Henry was born in Barnville, South Carolina on November 4th, 1965. His mother is Lottie Mae Wallace. Henry's mother was very abusive. Nothing was ever good enough for her. She always talked down him, made sure he knew that he was nothing, but made sure his self-esteem was really low. And I'm pretty sure that's from abuse that she's probably had. Henry went to high school at Barnwell High. Henry actually did good in high school, even though his mother would always say he wasn't good enough at anything. He was elected to student council. He was a cheerleader, ended up graduating from Barnwell High School. After high school, Henry actually ends up going to college. And even after college, he joins the service. During college, his college years, he became a DJ at a radio station where he was able to make some money. And then after that, he went to actually another college, but it just didn't work out for him. So he ended up joining the Navy in 1985. And it's crazy because before joining the Navy, Henry was able to Marry his high school sweetheart, Moretta. They stayed together for some time. And then in 1992, Henry was honorably discharged from the Navy. After the Navy, he went looking for a job and he ended up becoming a chemical operator at a company called Sandoz Chemical Co. Even during this time, you know, since we're here today, we already know we're talking about somebody that didn't really have a good life. Henry was involved with drugs and crime. One of his drugs of choice was crack cocaine. And he would steal and rob and do burglaries just so he could have his drug money. It even is said that during his time in the Navy, Henry did crack. Eventually, these burglaries started to catch up with Henry and he eventually was arrested and he was sentenced to two years of supervision with probation. Even though he was sentenced to probation, Henry didn't always come to his mandatory meetings. He would always skip them or not want to give a drug test. And I'm pretty sure he didn't want to give a drug test because he was on the drugs. Like, leave the dope alone. Please, Henry, leave the dope alone. And during this time when Henry was doing burglaries, unfortunately, he sexually assaulted a 16-year-old girl. Uh, I'm just going to flat out say it. He raped a 16-year-old girl and he ended up getting fired from his job at the chemical plant. So as you can probably see, he's starting to spiral out of control. This is starting to be the beginning of when things really hit the fan for Henry. After he lost his job, Henry started up with his robberies and burglaries again. He ended up breaking into his old high school, which is Barnwell High, and he broke into the radio station and he stole a few items. They only found out that he stole these items because he tried to pawn them at a pawn shop that was actually close by to the high school. Henry moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, and he started working at fast food places. One popular fast food place he started to work at is Taco Bell, and he actually became a manager. Not bad, not bad. Working your way up, homie. And after he became a manager, he started to actually do good for himself. He got a girlfriend, got an apartment. He really was bringing his life together, but not for so long. So it's a long list. In total, Henry killed about 11 women. I'm going to name and tell you the things that Henry did to these women. I'm going to put up a warning because this can be graphic, especially since some children are Im involved. So child abuse. So just be mindful and know that things are going to get a little wild. March 1990, 18-year-old Tashana from Barnwell High School was raped and strangled by Henry. He dumped her body in a lake. She wasn't discovered until a few weeks later. Henry was questioned about her murder, but no charges ever came about. May 1992, 23-year-old Shannon she was a sex worker and a known drug dealer in the area. Henry beat 
Shannon to death because she asked him to pay her for her services. And I believe the drugs that she gave him didn't want to pay. So he brutally beat her to death. He dumped her body near railroad tracks. She wasn't found until a few days later. June 1992, 20-year-old Caroline, a college student and a friend of Henry's girlfriend. At her apartment, he dumped her body in a wooded area. And after he did that, a few days later, he helped his girlfriend and Caroline's sister file a missing persons report. That's sick. That's That's fucking sick. February 1993, Shawana, a college student and employee of Taco Bell, Henry raped and strangled her in her own home and he was her supervisor. Remember, he is being labeled as the Taco Bell strangler. So a lot of these connections with the women are very close. It's either his girlfriend's friends, his girlfriend co-workers, or it's his co-workers are friends of his co-workers that he ends up killing. And all of them are women, African-American women. And we'll touch on that in a minute <laughs> after I get through everybody he strangled and sexually assaulted. June 1993, Aubrey, 24 years old, was a manager at Taco Bell. He raped and strangled her and her body was found three days later. I'm pretty sure he had to caught her like after work or he stalked her for a little bit because I'm pretty sure he's not, you know, strangling people at work. So I'm pretty sure he's starting to stalk, hunt. I hate to even use the word hunt, but hunt women down at this point. August 1993, Valencia, 21 years old, college student and a friend of Henry's sister. Henry raped and strangled her and then set her body on fire fire just so he could destroy evidence so they couldn't find him and the sick part again is that Henry ends up going to Valencia's funeral with his sister and gives his condolences to her mother and I think that is wild but they do say when you are murdered it's somebody close to you it's it's rare that it's somebody random that has ended one of your loved ones or your life. September 1993, 20-year-old college student Michelle, she was a friend of a co-worker that worked at Taco Bell that I'm pretty sure that Henry was supervising. He raped and strangled her at her apartment and he did this in front of her son, a young son. February 1994 isn't a murder, but I guess it would be important because Henry was called shoplifting and at this time they didn't connect the dots that Henry was murdering women but I mean I can understand because robbery and murder are two different sections of the police department so why would they right why why would they I mean why would they shoplifting doesn't escalate the murder for some people so February 20th 1994 this is all in the same year Vanessa 25 years old she was a sister of a co-worker that Henry supervised at Taco Bell. He raped and strangled her and Vanessa's mother pleaded with the public and the police to please find who did this to her daughter. But it just seems to not happen. I'm going to be honest, at this time they weren't really connecting the dots thinking that all these women were being killed by the same guy. They just thought it was each murder was separate and I'm pretty sure that they thought that because like I said before these women are African-American and back in the 90s let's be honest the police and even now the police did did not care about African-American women going missing they only worried about a certain color of people going missing these murders weren't on their radar so March 1994 Betty 24 years old the assistant manager at Bojangles. And want to guess who works at Bojangles? His girlfriend. Henry raped, murdered, and robbed her. Which is, I mean, it's not funny, but it's like, what, what, like, how, how, how is this still going? Henry took her items to a pawn shop and pawned them before anybody even noticed that she was dead. And in this time of robbing her he even took her car like you know grand theft took the car started driving around in it for a couple days and then he dumped it somewhere march 1990 
four, same year, same month. Brandy, 18 years old. Henry raped, murders Brandy. And the sick part is he did this as she was holding her son. Her son is just a baby. You talk about like newborn baby here. March 10th, 1994, the same month, another year. As you can see, he's done like three murders in one month. He kills 35 year old Deborah. Deborah is a co worker of Henry's girlfriend who works at Bojangles. Henry rapes, strangles, and stabs her in the stomach and chest 38 times. They say after you stab somebody seven times, it's rage. It's not like it's an act. Like, I mean, I guess after you stab somebody seven times, it's not an accident, but. This one is definitely like not an accident. This was rage that he felt when he did this to Deborah. After he killed Deborah, he took her money and went to go buy drugs. And I'm pretty sure his drug of choice was crack cocaine. So as we can see from these last three murders, we can see that Henry is escalating and he's really amping it up. And I'm pretty sure that at this time, because all three of these, he robbed these women the last three murders before the end happens for him. He robbed all three of these women. So I'm pretty sure this is for his drug habit. At the time, police finally started to get on board and connecting these murders. And they finally only started connecting them because two murders happened at the same apartment complex. That apartment complex is the Lake Apartment Complex. After these two murders were found at the same complex, police decided to bump up patrol to maybe find him since they believe this is now his hunting ground. And guess what happened? March 13, 1994, they arrest Henry. You know where they find him? At the late apartment complex. After police talk to Henry for 12 hours from interrogations, he finally confesses to all the murders that he did in North Carolina, the ones he did in South Carolina. And in total, it adds up to about 11 African-American women who have lost their lives from his hands. And you know what's shocking? The police just did nothing about this until two died at the same complex. Remember that. Confessing to these murders, he actually was able to give great detail about where he hit him, where he did it, and how he did it, and how he got away with it. It is some reports that it says that the police could have caught him earlier. The FBI looked at the evidence and the crime scenes and everything, and they said that he was very messy. He didn't pay attention to anything. If he was able to get somebody cornered, he was. Like, the FBI were shocked at the time that he wasn't caught before 11 people were killed. So there's a lot of criticisms from the black community. And you know what? I agree with those criticisms Went from the black community feeling as if there was no help from the police during this time. Like, and I can agree. I don't know how 10 people go missing or murdered or you keep finding bodies and you don't think it's not a serial killer. And people are pleading for you to find some answers and you still don't do it. Some also felt that Henry shouldn't have been able to kill 10 women in North Carolina. How didn't they start connecting dots after the third murder? Usually after the third, they usually start, you know, figuring things out and bringing in the FBI to do a profile. A lot of things start to come together after three people are raped, strangled, and... <laughs> and you know robbed but that didn't happen in this case and it didn't happen due to the murders happening in african-american communities charlotte's pd actually does end up apologizing to the african-american community around this time due to them not putting the resources and putting the effort in to find henry and where he went and what he was doing and how he was able to kill two women in the same complex and nobody saw anything you know like you know the groundwork that they put for others. For evidence reasons, Henry went to court, but it took two years for them to get things together due to evidence. Charlotte's prosecutors were really shooting for the death penalty. Henry's lawyers were only looking for life. But personally, after you killed 10 women, there's no way you should be sitting in jail for life. Come on. After the trial, they find Henry guilty and he is sentenced to death. The end. I'm joking. That's not the end because Henry tries to appeal his death sentence. But till this day, today, he is still sitting on death row. And the crazy part is during this time of sitting on death row, Henry was able to get married to a former prison nurse. Like, how do y'all fall in love with goddamn inmates? Like, you know, he's killed 
like 11 girls, 11 young women. He tried to kill a goddamn baby. Like, what? why would you marry this guy? You know what? Let me calm down. <laughs> Let me calm down. Because you know what? Y'all are sick. That's what I found out. Y'all are sick. <laughs> but anyway, that is our story for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a little bit of a long one. You know, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you later. Bye. Everything's the day that you